Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are working on these four solid wood dining chairs that I found at the thrift store for $5 each. What a steal. But these chairs have cane webbing backs and they have a really cool style that I was actually looking for. My girlfriend and I are looking for some new dining chairs. So she showed me these black, Nadia black cane chairs from CB2 a little while ago. And they're super cool. They're $650 a chair. But since we found these at the thrift store, we're going to see what we can do to make them look pretty similar. So that's the inspiration for the video. And obviously, they're not going to look identical, but we're going to do our best to make them look pretty similar. So let's, uh, let's get this project started. First thing we're going to do is throw out this plastic drop cloth just to keep everything nice and clean. And then we want to remove all the cushions to each seat so we don't get any paint on them and they're all being replaced anyway. So we'll just plug in the drill and we'll get the right size bit and we can get started on removing them. As I was removing each cushion, I was taking a pencil to them and just putting front and back on them so I just knew which direction they were placed in before just to make sure they would fit better after. After removing all the cushions, it was time to clean. I'm using crud cutter to degrease this entire chair from top to bottom. We wanna make sure there's no grease on this surface because we are painting this chair black. So. Let's get rubbing and make sure you get everything off. You can just see how much dirt was on the surface. On each chair leg, there were old floor protectors and they were stuck on good as you can see. So I just took out a utility knife and just scraped away all the uh, sticky residue on the bottom. So that cleaned it up pretty nice. The main issue with these chairs were how wobbly they were, so they weren't sturdy to sit in. So I picked up these plastic bottles on Amazon and they're perfect for just putting glue in the little cracks. So I'm going to throw some uh, Gorilla wood glue in the container and then I'm just going to apply the wood glue throughout the little cracks. I'll be honest, I thought it was a little bit bigger, but it still worked out pretty good. So some parts of the chair would actually come out. They were fully just loose and I can take them out of the chair. For the pieces that could, I would take them out just like this, use a screwdriver to take out and remove any old glue on the inside and then sand down the piece a bit. And I wouldn't sand down too much because you don't want it to be loose. And then I would actually just take it, fill up the holes with glue and put some more glue on the outside as well and just put them back in place. And it was pretty simple. And I didn't have enough clamps to just put one clamp on each piece I glued. So all I did was I will, well, first I would clean up the glue. But then I would just put on painter's tape on each piece just to kind of hold it in position as best as possible. That was kind of the best, uh, best way I can go about it for how many chairs I had. And here's what I did to the pieces that I didn't completely take apart. And finally, after a nice bit of work, I had all the chairs glued up and that will help them become a little bit more sturdy. But don't worry, I have another plan at the end that will also make them sturdier. So don't, uh, don't think that's all I did. But let's talk about the cane webbing here. So I actually try oxalic acid here on the back. I had it in a bowl and I dip a rag into it and apply it directly on the cane. And I thought this would help lighten it up and it did nothing. And then I also tried uh, adding bleach to the cane webbing and you can see I'm pointing here. This is the one I bleached and tried oxalic acid. If you compare it to the other ones, you can tell it looks pretty much exactly the same. So I had to change up the plan and I decided it was a good time to go and buy some new cane webbing here. So we're going to be recaning these chairs later on. But first we need to remove the old cane because we're going to paint these chairs first. 
So the process of removing uh, old cane webbing off the back of a chair. So this cane is pressed on here. And as you can see, I just use a utility knife and I go around the edge. You want to be careful. You don't want your knife to slip and scratch the wood, which I almost did a few times pretty bad. But you just go around the edge on both the inside and the outside of the spline. And you can just remove the spline like that but I'm trying to save this old cane webbing because I might use it in another project for something else. So I'm just gonna, I'm not just gonna rip it up and remove it. So I'm just gonna peel it away and then cut it off around the outside edges. So you can watch the process. So sometimes there's more glue and the spline does not come out super easily. So I had to really work hard here on this, this specific chair. But what you want to do is you want to go around the edge. There's a, there is a tool that you can use, but I just used a small screwdriver and I went around the edge and removed all the old cane webbing pieces and any old pieces of spline and glue. So I cleaned out each chair and this does take a lot of time. I'll tell you that for free. And then when I was done all that, I actually just took a little damp rag here and just cleaned the inside out even more. So now it's time for some scuff sanding. I'm using 180 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to be going around each and every corner of this chair. We're going to get rid of any scratches or dings in the surface. And also scuff sanding helps the paint adhere as best as possible. So we want to make sure that we get, get everywhere. And then I threw on a tack cloth and we're gonna clean these chairs from top to bottom. We don't want any sanding dust interfering with our painting process. So take a tack cloth and wipe this chair clean. With all the prep work completed for painting, I'm using a Wooster paintbrush and silk all-in-one mineral paint in Anchor Black by Dixie Bell Paint. And we are just gonna throw this stuff on. This is a built, this paint has a built-in primer, so uh, since it's black paint, I'm not going to use primer or anything like that. We're just going to get straight to painting and this stuff adheres pretty good. So I was not concerned about it. So just take the brush and we are going to get the first coat started. I drilled in two screws where the seat sits just so I can pick up the chairs when they're painted. So that's the only reason why they're there. And here's a super sped up version of me painting the next chair. After painting each chair with the first coat, I was done for the day. So I waited until the following day to get started on coat number two. It's really important to sand in between coats, especially when you're using a brush because you want to eliminate those brush strokes and brush marks throughout. So I'm using a 220 grit sanding sponge and I just go over the entire surface everywhere that's painted and we are going to sand down the painted surface until it's even more smooth. So just go over everything. And just like before, we take a tack cloth and we're just going to remove any sanding dust that was uh, left on the surface. So here's what the first coat looks like. And now we throw on coat number two. After coat number two on each chair, I just sat back, relaxed, took in the views, waited till everything dried. And then I came back and realized we needed a coat number three because it didn't cover exactly how I wanted. So we sanded. We paint and we finally get the final painted surface that we wanted. Everything was nice and covered. 
Although this paint has a built-in top coat, I'm still gonna be applying a clear coat, a satin clear coat by Dixie Bell just on the surface for extra protection. Since chairs get a lot of traffic, I think it's a really good idea to throw this stuff on. So I just use some tin foil, throw it in a bowl, and I just add a bit of my paint into the uh, clear coat just so I don't cause any white cloudy streaks on the finish because you don't want to see that on black paint. And I'm using this little foam applicator here and I just wipe it on, take it on the edge of the bowl and wipe off any extra. And then I just simply wipe it onto the painted surface and you can just watch the process of what I do. So the foam applicator works pretty good. I think it's a pretty good way to apply it at first. And then I like going over with my Wooster brush just on the edge of the bristles, just going around and kind of smoothing everything out. I thought that worked pretty good. After applying two clear coats over the black paint, uh, I was finished and now it's time to remove this hard to look at fabric that is currently on the cushions of the chairs. I use the screwdriver just to kind of lift up the staples and then you can just use some pliers just to grab the staples and rip them out of the chair. So there was a couple layers of fabric on this seat and I got down to the green on each seat and we kept the green fabric on and I just used that as a base layer because it was a pretty good shape and that is what we are going to be applying the new fabric over. So. I'm going to follow our inspiration and we're using black Sherpa. So I got this black Sherpa at a fabric store and it was only like $20 for the full, I think it was like two meters of Sherpa. So that was pretty affordable, I must say. And I already had a staple gun. So we are ready to staple this fabric on and cover up the old and ugly green. <laughs> And I threw a lot of staples in there, so we needed to reload at least once. And I am not an expert at reupholstering these seats, so I just kind of pulled them back until I couldn't see any folds that would be visible on the chair. So just staple and have some fun with it. After finishing four seats and all the fabric is on, it's time to start the cane webbing. I never bought cane webbing before and I didn't know how expensive it was, but I ended up going to a local bamboo shop and it was pretty cool, my first time there, but it was $82 for four feet of cane webbing and four splines. So I guess that's an okay deal, I don't know. But the process is pretty simple. You wanna cut off your cane and you wanna soak it in water for 20 minutes. So it kind of loosens it up so you can work with it while you're applying it. So I just filled it up the tub a bit and I just threw the cane webbing in there. And while that was soaking, I just cut all the other pieces up. So they were perfect sizes for the chair. And then I took it out of the tub and dried it off with a towel and it was ready to get started. So I'm gonna explain as best as I can on how to do this pressed cane backing. So it's not hand caned, it is pressed caned. The first thing I did was just cut down the cane to an easier uh, size to deal with. And this, you just wanna make sure you have, I don't know, at least two, three, four centimeters past the crevice that you're gonna be pushing it in. And then you can start pulling the strands back until you hit the crevice. So the reason why you want to be past the crevice is because you want to, we're pressing the cane in and you want to make sure there's enough cane to press in uh, so it sticks and stays into the crevice. And the reason we pull strands off, it's just, it's just easier to press in and there's only so much room in that crevice. So you want to, you want to pull those strands off. And then I also cut the sides off here just to the same length, just over the uh, edge the crevice you just want to make sure you don't cut these too small because then you're really then you're really messed up and you also want to pull the strands on the corners here because it just helps pushing them in around the corners as well so just peel back the strands until you hit the crevice in the corner you don't want to go past the uh, where you're pushing 
the cane into the uh, into the corner. So just back to there, and then you are ready. So we did the corners, but now we're also going to do the sides. One thing you don't want to forget is lining up the cane nice and straight. So I just took one line and just lined it up perfectly with the bottom crevice. Just make sure it's nice and straight before you start pushing it in. So I found the best tool was this wooden spatula thing I had out in my kitchen and it worked perfect for pushing it down. I think a metal spatula or anything similar would work fine here. Basically the tool just needs to be skinnier than the crevice and not sharp enough to cut the webbing. So just that simple. As you're pushing the cane webbing in, it's nice to have something wedge it in like a piece of wood. So I actually use clothes pins and I broke them in half and just kind of use them to jam in the cane webbing just to make sure it would stay nice and tight and in place. So. And here's a little close-up of the wooden tool I'm using to press it in. And now you can just kind of watch the process of me pressing it in all the way around. Okay, so now we're going to chisel around so that you want to make sure when you chisel it pull it from the inside and push on the outer side of the uh, of the cane if you push from the inside this way you're going to cut it on the inside and then you're not going to give a place for the spline to grip and hold things tight it'll just cause the webbing to tighten when it dries and your spline will not hold it in place so you don't want to do that so some people take it and hammer it but I find I just bought this and it's really sharp so I can just twist it and it just cuts it perfectly so you can well probably be better with a rubber mallet just go like that which works pretty good maybe I'll do it just to show you or See, that kind of damages the paint a lot more. So that's why, you, if you're not using paint, you can just uh, use the hammer, but if you're using paint, you kind of gotta be more careful. And you don't wanna accidentally hit it too hard, slide through, chip the paint really bad, because then you got hours of work ahead of you. So this is what I'm doing. I find it doesn't really change the speed or anything like that. Definitely you gotta put a bit more elbow grease in just because you gotta push yourself but I do find it works better that way. Smaller chisel on the edges are probably around the corner is the way to go. One thing you don't want to forget is throwing the spline into the water. So when you start chiseling, that's probably a good time you throw the spline in because you want to make sure it sits in water for 15 minutes or so, so it can wrap around the corners a lot easier. Anyways, when you're done chiseling, you want to throw in some wood glue in the crack. I'm using a Gorilla wood glue and just fill it in nicely. You don't want to put too much. I find at the start, it depends how big the crevice is. You can pretty much push it in, but I feel like some you might have to. Oh, hit my head off the camera. Sorry, you might have to hammer it in right away. But I guess it all depends. Some spots you won't be able to get it in as easy, so you're gonna have to hammer it in. Like right here is pretty hard to get in, so. I have a rubber mallet. I recommend a rubber mallet if, if you paint it especially because it won't damage the wood nearly as much or the painted surface, the wood, whatever. I think rubber is the way to go. I 
just like to take a pencil here, just kind of give me an idea where this should be cut. And then take some really sharp scissors and give it a straight cut right on the line. That should be perfect. I don't need to take a tiny bit more off. There we go. A little bit of a gap there, but not the end of the world. Doesn't hurt to take a little tack cloth, just rub around. And of course, I did all the chairs. Okay, so I picked up these two inch L brackets and also a bunch of uh, half inch wood screws. So we're gonna put these under the seats in the corners and this is just gonna keep the chairs as sturdy as possible for a long time because before the chairs were, chairs were really, really wobbly, but I have them glued up now. I think just adding these L brackets are really gonna keep these guys stable for a long time. So let's throw these on. Okay, all the brackets are installed and now it's time to install the seats back on the chair. And finally, let's take a look at these chairs one more time before they are finished. And here is what they look like after. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the full refinishing and recaning and all that process i had a lot of fun with these chairs we really modernized them compared to what they used to look like but in comparing them to the cb2 nadia black cane chairs i think we did a pretty good job making them look similar of course they're not the exact same chair but i got the colors and the fabric and the cane it all matches pretty good so i think we did a pretty good job and i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and our, my plan is to only keep two of these chairs so i'm still selling two so we should still make some money on this project it did take a long time though so the roi might not be there but i'll let you guys know what i sell these for but anyways thanks for watching anybody and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't and hit the thumbs up on this video it means a lot and i'll catch you guys in the next video